So Felix, in 2020, in the Strait of Hormuz and also the general Gulf region, we expect to see a continued threat to shipping coming from the tensions between Iran and their proxies on one side and the US and their key Gulf allies on the other side. And we expect this threat to come in the form of a continued risk of attacks to ships, particularly in the Strait of Hormuz, but the broader Gulf region as well, but also in the form of seizures and detentions of vessels. Importantly, we don't expect these to escalate to a conflict scenario, but there is a risk of miscalculation or misidentification in one of these incidents that could lead to, to an escalation. But importantly for operators in 2020, the risk their ships will be very dependent on the specific ships, what flag they carry, the type of operations they're, they're undergoing, the cargo they're carrying, the port of origin destination, for example. And why this is important is because the tactics that are driving these incidents are designed to be limited in nature and have a deniable outcome. Absolutely, Cormac. And those incidents that you've just mentioned, they of course also play out in the cybersecurity world. So if you are a commercial shipping organization that operates in the Strait in 2020, expect continued high threats to your communication systems, to your navigational systems, in terms of GPS jamming, GPS spoofing, and also attempts by threat actors to compromise communications such as bridge-to-bridge -bridge communications. What that means for your sensitive information is that if you are using unencrypted channels, that information may be at risk. Also, all of that is of course aimed to disrupt operations of global shipping organizations and also just to really expose that vulnerability in this critical energy supply route. And also Iran of course has a high intent to disrupt and also complicate the operations by U.S. naval military assets operating in those regions. But perhaps what's more important is also that this doesn't only affect the offshore vessels in the waters there, but also the networks of organizations operating onshore. So expect in 2020 continued high Iranian cyber espionage threats against critical sectors there, such as maritime, oil and gas and energy and also expect Iran to place malware on systems that can be commanded to disrupt or even destroy such systems in times of heightened escalation. But ultimately, the severity and the frequency of these cyber attacks will depend on the much larger geopolitical drivers in the region. Precisely, and the political risk colleagues that we at Control Risks work with every day, who are based in the US and the Middle East, tell us that they don't assess their to be any easing of these tensions in 2020, which is critical for our analysis. But they also tell us that nobody really wants a war in 2020. And they expect, and we expect, that Iran will continue to push in a limited way to ease sanctions and the impact of the maximum pressure campaign that it's up against, but also will refrain from causing so much damage in order to calculate its strategy, for example, post-2020 US presidential election campaign and who they will have to deal with in 2021. But also importantly, Iran knows that it has leeway to commit larger scale attacks without risking uh, a large military response. So there is in 2020 also a risk of these larger scale attacks. And that's why it's important in 2020 that any operators in this region or anyone with an interest in the Gulf region will have to monitor both the tactical security situation but also the geopolitical tensions that are driving that situation in order to best prepare contingency planning and business continuity.